Good day, folks. Uh, it is fall here in Kentucky, which means we have more time at Earth Tools to shoot videos because we're not so busy on the phone. So today we're going to talk about the comparisons between a power harrow and a tiller equipped with a depth roller system. Uh, there are two types of depth roller systems on the market, uh, one designed and marketed by BCS America and one designed and marketed by us at Earth Tools. The performance is more or less the same. So there I'm kind of lumping those into one category and then comparing it to the power harrow. So there have been uh, other videos put online by various parties uh, talking about either the BCS PDR or tillers in general. Uh, and some things that got mentioned in those videos, I just want to kind of clarify or um, you, you know, put in my own two cents about. Uh, one comment that was made in one of the videos uh, concerning the BCS PDR system, which is their precision depth roller, which is what they call theirs, uh, is that it, with the, till, the, the tiller equipped with this thing, works just like a power harrow, or it replaces a power harrow. I can't remember the exact phrasing. When I heard it, I was like, no, that's not quite right, because the power harrow actually works the soil in a completely different way, and it's not a replacement. Uh, so that claim is sort of erroneous. What it does the same as a power harrow is that it has a roller in the back which flattens, tamps, and smooths the bed. That's great, but that's the only function in which it's just like a power harrow. The rest of how it works the soil is different. Um, so we'll start with that and just kind of go into how these things work soil. So first I'm going to pop this power harrow off of here. So uh, for comparison's sake, or right say for full disclosure, we are talking about the R2 Rinaldi power harrow here, which is the authentic Italian-made gear-driven power harrow that J.M. Fortier mentions in his books and that he bought one of from us back in 2008 and, and then mentioned us in his book. Uh, so this is the real one. This is not the BCS version of the power harrow, which is a uh, chain-driven sort of imitation. Um, but anyway, the action of both power harrows, whether it be the BCS brand or the R2 Rinaldi brand, the action of how they work the soil is the same. So in that way, we can kind of lump them together. So you can see how the power harrow tines rotate. When this thing is down in the ground, the tines are rotating like this, and each one rotates the opposite direction of the ones next to it. So what this does, I'm going to lean this back here, uh, is it stirs the soil around and chops it up some, without inverting the soil structure. And this is very important and it's, uh, you know, come to the attention of a lot of kind of cutting edge soil scientists and organic farmers who tend to follow that type of thing. If you don't want to invert your soils, this is the tool. And they, you know, modern soil science finds that the, least, the less inversion you can do of soil in terms of its layers, is actually better for the soil because nature actually does not invert soil. Nature builds soil from the top down. The microbes that are in soil, which allow soil to do what it does biologically, there's some microbes that like to be a half inch deep, there's some that like to be three inches deep, there's other types that like to be five inches deep, and if you're constantly mixing those all up with your tillage methods, then you have to deal with your soil kind of not performing as well. It just has to kind of recalibrate itself, get its equilibrium back. Um, also, when you're stirring the soil layers continually, like you would with a tiller, uh, in your cultivation process, the other thing you have to deal with is bringing up weed seeds that might be buried down in the till. For example, if your primary tillage, which was done with a rotary plow or moldboard plow or something like this, if your primary tillage has turned over the soil and buried weed seeds that were on the surface, you really don't want those re-emerging to the, you don't want those bring back up to the surface by your secondary tillage methods where they can re-sprout. Um, so the power harrow leaves those down in the soil profile. It just mixes things horizontally, not vertically. Also, because you get no descending action, a tiller has this descending action pushing the soil ahead of the tines as they cut down through the soil, which can cause quite a bit of hard pan at the bottom of the tilt, particularly in high clay soils. So tillers are, you know, known all over the industry for in high clay soils causing big hard pan problems if you're always tilling to that same depth. 
A power hair will never cause a hard pan because the tine is working at a fixed depth in the soil as it goes forward. It's not compressing any soil as it makes a downward arc. So you don't get any, uh, don't, no hard pan formation, no mixing of soil layers, no bringing up of weed seeds. Also, you get less soil over pulverization with a power harrow. The, the harrow tines are functioning, they're making their rotation down in the soil, their entire rotation. They're not coming up out of the ground and then going back down into the ground on the forward curvature like a tiller would. So that soil is not centrifugally flung by the tines up against the hard object. This is why, this is one of the reasons you have a hood over a tiller is to, well, the main reason is to protect you from the rotating tines, but the, the number two reason is for that soil to just kind of ricochet off of that hood and, you know, this is supposed to break up the soil better. Well, it does. And, in fact, it can break it up too much. If The more you till your soil, the more that soil gets slammed up against the underside of the tiller hood, and particularly when the soil is on the drier side, it just smashes the soil to kind of a dust powder, which is not what you want in soil profile. That totally breaks down all the, uh, the capillary action in the soil, all your soil structure kind of goes away, and it'll just pack down like concrete after a rain. So the power harrow just does, you can make more passes over a particular bed in a given season with a power harrow and not reduce your soil to dust because the power harrow is just gentler. It just doesn't, it just doesn't beat up the soil as bad. The actual blade speed of the power harrow is actually slightly slower than the tiller as well. So that helps to not over pulverize things. So that's what the power harrow does. And of course the depth is fully adjustable because these rollers adjust up and down incrementally on both systems. So you can very precisely, uh, you know, control your working depth and leave a nice pre-tamped bed, you know, perfectly flat, firm bed with either of these things. That's the only way they're similar. So now we'll talk about the tiller. Flip this in here. This is a typical BCS 30 inch tiller. This is the Earth Tools, uh, as we call it, TDS system, tiller depth system, um, which uses a solid roller. BCS uses more of a perforated roller on theirs, which has potential issues, but we talk about that in another video. Fact is, it's a tiller with a roller on it. So, as you can see, the tiller tines rotate like this. They're rotating forward as the machine goes forward, same direction as the wheels. And, as I mentioned, the upward curvature of the tiller tines takes them out of the ground. They do like this porpoise thing and go back down into the ground on the forward edge here. The soil being carried by the tines at, at the upper curvature gets slammed up against this hood. Now there is a way to mitigate that. If you have a rototiller currently and are trying not to have to buy a power harrow because they are quite expensive, uh, you can mitigate your soil structure damage in terms of that ricochet slamming effect by simply throttling your engine down. So that's a trick for anybody who has a tiller already and is using it or is looking to buy a tiller um, as, you know, if they're looking to buy a tiller as an option because they don't want to spend the extra money for a power harrow, well, yes, you can mitigate that, that aspect of the soil structure damage. Just throttle the thing back. In my own garden, when I use a tiller, I run the tiller, I run the engine like half to two-thirds throttle, two-thirds max. Sometimes I'll only run it as little as a quarter throttle, but the thing is your, your time speed is going to be directly related to how fast the engine's going. So if you throttle back and lower these time speed, they just don't throw the soil up as hard against the underside of this hood. And you can actually watch the difference if you're using a tiller, throttle it up all the way, you know, drive five feet, look at what comes out of the back of the tiller, then throttle down to half throttle and keep going and just watch. You'll see the soil curd size in the, in, the, in the work soil just increase a little bit. It's not getting over pulverized. So that's one thing you can do. Of course, you can't mitigate the fact that a tiller mixes the layers. It's always going to mix the layers. The depth roller allows you to minimize your depth very precisely. You can set this thing a half inch deep if you want. And obviously, if you're only working the top half inch because you're just taking off a few weeds, well, who cares if it mixes that little layer of soil? Those weed seeds are going to germinate anyway. Um, but when you're working, say, three inches deep, yes, it's going to mix all the soil layers within that three inches. There's just nothing you can do about it. Um, it's just the nature of a tiller. Now, let's talk about an advantage of rototillers. So, the fact that a tiller trills the soil this way and mixes those soil layers is advantageous when you are dealing with a cover crop. 
and we're talking about like a you know a flail mode cover crop residue this is actually hay out of one of our hay bales so something that was flail mode would probably be finer than this but the point is it looks more or less like it and when you encounter something like this with a power harrow that is you've, you've taken your bed you've flail mowed your cover crop and, and now you want to punch that sort of into the top layer of soil to help it decompose the power harrow is not too good at that at all because again it mixes this way it does not invert soil this way so if you go deep enough with the power harrow like four or five inches deep you know it'll it'll sort of bury some of that material here's carl the cat he always gets in the videos because you know that's the kind of guy he is hi carl so um yeah the power harrow tines will just kind of bunch this stuff up in front of them and pr push it around in a circle and not really incorporate it that well the tiller on the other hand mixes everything up so if you're going two inches deep five inches deep whatever your depth is it's going to mix evenly all the structure that's in uh, that layer of soil including the cover crop that's on top so it punches it in really nicely so if you're doing a lot of cover cropping uh, he lays down in what little soft there is he's an amazing guy um, if you're doing a lot of cover cropping it might pay you to have a tiller around you know just for that because it can really speed up cover crop incorporation into the soil otherwise you just have to let the cover crop decompose a little longer on top of the bed maybe throw a silage tarp over it to help speed the microbial action and break it down and then you can get it into the ground with a power harrow so but there is a place for rototillers uh, as far as mixing compost in uh, one of the videos out there talking about the BCS roller system uh, has the fellow who's doing the demonstration uh, spreads a line of compost out on the bed and it's pretty well prepared compost nice and granular all broken down you know shovels a line of it out of the bed and then uses the tiller with depth roller system to till it in the curious thing about that if you watch it uh, this is a video you can find uh, on I think it's linked to BCS America's website the guys make two passes over the bed to get the compost fully distributed throughout the width of that 30 inch bed uh, now I saw that and I'm like boy that's unfortunate because one of the things we're all about is minimal tillage you don't want to till any more than you have to because it just degrades soil structure but yet he runs it twice to incorporate this line of compost now of course he could have just spread a wider line of compost but he didn't he went right down the middle but the thing is the tiller as it turns it works the soil kind of laterally like this so it mixed in the soil that was in that line and threw a little of it out to the side but to get it all the way out to the full width of the tiller he had to make a second pass well if he just shot that video using a power harrow you'd have seen something amazing what are you doing you crazy cat um one little line of compost down the middle and suddenly you make one pass with the power harrow and it's fully spread all the way side to side why because the power harrow works the soil side to side as those tines rotate, the one next to it is rotating the opposite direction and sort of hands off the material and it goes around. So it just distributes the soil side to side. This is why the power harrows are actually uh, uh, coveted and used widely by a lot of landscapers in Europe uh, for leveling out ground. If you've got you know, dog holes in your, in your yard or ruts or something like this and you run a power harrow over it, man, it's amazing. They just disappear. It just distributes that soil left to right and levels everything out. So that's, that's a neat feature of power harrows that tillers don't necessarily have because you don't get that, dis, you know, the soil distribution is more front to back with a tiller or top to bottom, not side to side. So if you're mixing compost in that's granulated compost, the power harrow is an excellent tool for it. Um, the fact that it's not going to work a cover crop as deep uh, doesn't affect compost so much because it doesn't have that stringy nature that will just push in front of the tines of the harrow it'll cut a furrow and the compost drops in so it'll very effectively mix it into the top couple inches of, of soil layer so that kind of covers the mechanical workings of these things the power harrows as I mentioned are more expensive because there's just a lot more to them you've got you know all these different spindles turning a lot more bearings a lot more gears if it's a gear drive unit like this uh, versus just a small gearbox in the middle so the power harrows are necessarily more expensive uh, from a production standpoint. Now, there was also a comment made in one of these other videos that the BCS depth roller system and tiller was, in quotes, much more affordable than a power harrow. Now, I don't know what they're quite 
talking about there because BCS's depth roller system is quite exorbitantly expensive if you looked into this at all about uh, you know, close to a thousand dollars for that plus a tiller for 800 or so so that's eighteen hundred dollars the R2 power harrow sells for roughly 2200 at the time of shooting this video the BCS power harrow is a couple hundred dollars more than that so it's not a huge difference um, but it obviously is a little cheaper uh, now the, the the BC, or I'm sorry, the Earth Tools depth roller system is considerably less money. We sell this for five, six hundred dollars, and of course the tiller for eight. So you're you're getting close to half the cost of a power harrow. So there, you're actually talking a pretty good difference. Um, and if you're on a budget, if you're a farm on a budget and just can't afford the extra whatever it is, eight hundred dollars for the power harrow, then the tiller still can work. You just be careful with it. Don't over till. Run your engine slower, um, and you know. If you're using a broad fork or something to break up any potential hard pan that might occur, you know, just broad forking once a year will erase that, so you can mitigate that. So, <clears throat> Carl, you're going to need to move, buddy, because I've got to lay this tiller down. Maybe that's lying it down. I never get that straight. Put this thing up. Let's see how easy it goes here. This unlevel ground. There we go. All right. So one thing I wanted to mention is about balance. So when you're using a walk-behind tractor, uh, balance is very important to the, the the operator's impression of how easy this machine is to work. With a depth roller system, either depth roller system, the BCS or ours, attached to the back of the tiller, you've just added 40 or 50 pounds to the back of this thing, so it's harder to lift out of the ground. If that's a problem, either because it's wearing you out maneuvering the thing, or because now there's so much down pressure that it's smashing your beds, that is if you've got really soft, light, fluffy soil, and the, the pressure, the ground pressure of the roller and tiller combined is just mushing your beds out to the side, well, you can add front end weight to the machine. That's not a problem at all. We offer front weight systems. BCS offers front weight systems. The one we offer, we've got right here, it's kind of a suitcase style, so it just hooks on the bumper like that. So I just added 50 pounds right there, which took 50 pounds off the back of this. So now I can lift this up a lot easier. So that's always doable. Whatever implement you have, if you feel that if the tractor isn't balanced right and it's hard to handle, weights can be added to mitigate that. Don't fight with it, uh, just weight it appropriately. Same thing with the power hair, although they tend to be lighter um, now, there, I think there was a comment made in one of those other videos about the tiller and depth roller system being lighter and easier to handle than a power harrow. And obviously that was in comparison to the BCS brand of power harrow because it is almost 50 pounds heavier than this R2 version, which is kind of amazing because you would think, okay, the R2 is heavier duty, it's all gear drive, it should be heavier built, right? That is, it should weigh more. No, uh, it's actually... Uh, engineered to be stronger and lighter. So one thing you see here, if you lined up about right, the overall projection from the PTO flange back is actually greater on the tiller depth row or the tiller with depth roller system versus the R2 power harrow. Now the BCS power harrow is a little more massive. There's just more there, so it comes back a little more. And as I said, it's 50 pounds heavier, so it's a fair to maneuver. Um, but in terms of overall, you know, operator space to, you know, maneuver back here and not mash your shins on anything, the R2 Power Hair actually is, is the best of all of them. But the BCS depth roller system is actually six inches longer than this, so it really sticks back here. Their roller's a little lighter, but the fact that it's a further back from the tractor makes it feel just as heavy. So another, another thing I needed to debunk about that maneuverability issue, because by far, of all the combinations, the R2 Power Harrow is the easiest to maneuver. It's, it's the lightest overall, and the, the weight being closer to the tractor axle just makes it easier to pick up, and you don't crack your shins on. So I think that pretty much covers it. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>